Capture the Flag is only going to be around for a few weeks, so to help you reach those top 500 spots or simply dominate in the arcade, we've got some useful tips to lead your team to victory. I'm sure you've already noticed that many of the rules for Capture the Flag have changed, but the most important is that any sort of movement or invulnerability skill you use will cause you to instantly drop the flag, so those sneaky sombra tactics are off the table. However, there are still some ways to get a speed boost or become nigh invulnerable that work with the new rules. The core of almost all of this is Lucio. If he uses Amp It Up while speed boosting, he will drop the flag, but he can still use the speed boost song passively and get a bonus from wall running to increase his speed. This could be used to attempt a sneaky push to grab the flag, and that's not a bad tactic if you're playing solo and your team are disorganised. However, it's so much better if you can find another player to work with, as Lucio's speed boost can be amped up on another player without causing them to drop the flag. This could be used with any hero, but tanks are your best bet, and Roadhog has become the most popular. <laughs> When rushing towards the flag, he can use Take a Breather to recover health and reduce incoming damage. Then Lucio's speed boost helps him to get onto the objective and get back to base before the enemy can catch up. His hook will also potentially allow for an easy kill during the attack. This isn't the only hero who can combo with Lucio however. Zarya's bubbles can also be used in a similar way to Hog's Take a Breather, but can be applied to another character. Anna's Nano Boost can also work wonders as it provides added damage resistance and opens up potential for getting a kill or two before grabbing the flag. Moira is also a very effective support. Her healing spray can be used to keep the flag carrier alive under heavy fire and her ultimate charge is so fast that it can be used many times during a match to support your teammates who are pushing onto the flag. Stupidity is not a right. Another important role is DPS, and if you're choosing to focus on kills, there are a few things to keep in mind. First of all, you want to be mobile. You need to be helping Lucio and any other attackers get the flag, but you also need to be able to peel back to defend your own or chase down the enemy if they grab it. Secondly, one-shot potential is huge. Being able to quickly kill a flag carrier is vital, as a lot of the time, they will have a huge amount of healing being poured into them. So, which heroes are best? Doomfist is a really great choice on many of the maps. He can one-shot many heroes and knock the enemy about to stop them from getting away with your flag. Tracer and Genji have the most mobility, so if you're good with them, they can be great. They're also both fantastic when the enemy is trying to return their flag, as they will often group up on the marker and you can easily wipe them out with an ultimate. Ha! Bet that smart! Steva actually plays fairly well in this role as well. She doesn't have much one-shot potential outside of the ultimate, but she does have the mobility to switch between attacking and defending very quickly, and her defense matrix can be used to cover the flag carrier, and if they do die, she makes a solid backup to carry it the rest of the way. Hanzo can also be super strong. Scatter Arrow deals enough damage to tear up a Roadhog, and its ultimate can be used to zone out the main route through many of the maps. Farah is another top tier hero, as she's able to throw the enemy off ledges, and if you do this to a flag carrier, it will actually instantly reset the flag back at your base. Lastly, we have the defending heroes, and this is a role that can change a lot, depending on what kind of offense the enemy is running. If they're just trying to attack with something like a Lucio, Tracer or Genji by themselves, then Symmetra or Torbjorn are great, but if you're facing a more organized team who are making their attacks as a group, you'll find them much less effective. Junkrat is one of the best choices. He can make it harder for the enemy to push it full force, throw people around with his mines and set traps on the flag wherever it is. He packs the DPS to deal with teams running multiple tanks and his Rip Tire is a great ultimate for either attacking or defending. He's also able to just sit there launching grenades across the map without leaving your base undefended. Mei is also great. Her walls can block off the flag or break up a team, her ultimate can win team fights, and even her primary fire can counter a speed boost. Some heroes are also great to make a quick swap to if you know the enemy is trying to push. Reaper and Bastion, for example, can be switched to when respawning to come out and deal a huge amount of damage that the enemy aren't expecting, and then if you like, you can switch back. It's important when playing a more defensive hero that you're being fluid and not just camping your flag the whole game. If a fight is happening around the middle of the map, you should be trying to help your team. You don't have to be rushing into the enemy base, but if you can help your team win a fight, they might get an easy capture. Which leads me to my next point, and that's when to play it safe. If you have a score advantage, you should think about going full defense to try and keep the enemy at bay until the clock runs out. This is particularly important during the last minute or so of a game. And the reverse of this is also true. If you're down a capture and the game is coming to an end, there's no point in defending anymore. You need to go all in and get their flag. 
Defending has no value if you don't have a positive score to defend. I will lead us to victory. Another thing to note is that if you win a team fight, it's time to push hard. It only takes a couple of kills to open up the potential for grabbing the flag, so don't wait around after winning a fight. Rush at the enemy and try and capitalize on the situation before they can recover. Also, once you have the flag, don't give up ground if you don't have to. If you just want to fight in their base, you can have someone run the flag back while the rest of your team just tries to camp the enemy. Done quickly enough, this can get you two or even three captures back to back. Then to flip that around, if you're on the receiving end of this tactic, you really need to try and regroup inside your spawn, leave as a unit, win the fight and then rush at their base. But as I'm well aware, it's often very hard to get your team to group up, so if that's the case, try to get past the enemy with a Sombra or Speedy Lucio and rush to their flag. Even if you don't get the capture, you'll find the enemy falls back to try and stop you and this will give the rest of your team some space. Lastly, and I mentioned this at the end as it's the most cheesy of strategies, Symmetra and Torbjorn are incredibly hard to dislodge without a team-wide effort. So if you're looking to climb out of the lower part of the ladder, they are a good choice, but don't expect them to be as effective once you start playing against teams who work together. But if you're stuck in those painful middle ranks and don't have anyone to team up with, then this is probably the most effective way to climb. Output levels maximized! So those are some of our favourite tips and hero choices for Capture the Flag, but have you found anything that works for you? Any tactics we missed or team competitions you'd like to share? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, this is James for Curse, saying thanks for watching, and enjoy the game. You can't